For those of you who are not treating bone marrow edema in your practice, I would make one suggestion. If you guys ever have somebody who has a partial meniscectomy who continues to have pain, or young arthritis patients that you don't seem to be getting better with injections, do, do an MRI. And one of the things that you will find is that we really underdiagnose these bone marrow edema lesions, and a lot of times they're the reason our patients still have pain. If we're going to treat bone marrow edema, I think it's important to define what bone marrow edema is. It's actually a term used to describe an MRI finding of hyperintense marrow signal on a fluid-sensitive, fat-suppressed background. It's essentially bright marrow edema on dark suppressed fat. The images that you will see this the best on are your proton density fat sats, your T2 fat sats, and your STIR images. Again, there are multiple causes for bone marrow edema. Probably the most common cause we see is an acute trauma such as a bone bruise, an ACL bone bruise. For the most part, these are going to be self-limiting and do not require any treatment. You can also say in the setting of avascular necrosis, if you have a chronic case such as this, there may not be much edema. However, if you happen to catch that same patient acutely, you will see significant hyperintense edema within the bone. You can also see this in the setting of stress and insufficiency fractures. And then finally, you can see it in osteoarthritis as an overload phenomenon. There have been multiple studies that have looked at the significance of bone marrow edema as a pain generator. We've all seen this patient walk into our clinic with absolutely no pain. So we all know that joint space narrowing is not essentially predictive for a patient having pain. Studies that have looked at this have found that pain in osteoarthritis is actually very weakly correlated with cartilage volume and thickness, but is very strongly related with the presence of a bone marrow lesion. Studies that have looked at arthritis and bone marrow edema have found that patients with bone marrow edema are nine times more likely to have pain requiring a total knee arthroplasty. One Canadian study, a longitudinal study of 123 patients, found that the most highly predictive factor for somebody going on to a total knee arthroplasty was the presence of a bone marrow lesion in either the medial compartment or the medial plateau. How do bone marrow edema lesions occur? Well, typically it's an acute chronic o or acute or chronic overload that leads to a concentrated stress. This leads to an area of high bone turnover, and one of two things will happen at this point. Either the lesion will go on to heal, which happens most of the time. However, occasionally you will have non-healing. Essentially what you get is a fracture or non-union of the subchondral bone with progression of the bone marrow edema. If this is left on check, this can lead to subchondral bone attrition, which can lead to deformity and progressive malalignment of the joint. How do we treat bone marrow edema? Well, for the most part, your treatment should start conservatively. Rest, non-weight bearing. In the setting of arthritis, you can try injections, unloader bracing, activity modification. There's been increased interest in the last several years on how do we treat these lesions surgically when they have failed conservative measures. What you have to understand is most of the treatments to date have been intended on stabilizing the lesion with calcium phosphate, with no real attempt made to heal the lesion. And here's the problem. This is a case in point of a patient of mine, two years out, status post, a calcium phosphate injection for a subchondral lesion. While this patient is completely pain-free, I am very concerned that I can still see the drill hole when I put in two years after the index procedure. What essentially that tells me is the date that I did this procedure, a clock started to this patient getting their only revision option after calcium phosphate injection, which is a knee replacement. In addition, because this is a non-biologic solution to a problem, this is actually contraindicated in the setting of avascular necrosis. If you do this, there's a high chance that the patient will actually have subchondral bone collapse. This is where intraosseous bioplasty provides us with an exciting new treatment options for the treatment of bone marrow edema. This provides us a biologic solution to most of our regular problems, such as trauma, stress fractures, or osteoarthritis, but it also allows for diversity of treatments in that it allows us to treat early stage avascular necrosis. The key here is the 4.5 millimeter drill and cannula, cannula that we use. This allows us to release intraosseous pressure while at the same time, after removing the cannulation, allows us to deliver a biologic either through an end or side delivery. Does reducing intraosseous pressure matter? Well, going back to 1975, studies have shown that patients with knee pain have increased intraosseous pressure. When you look at bone marrow edema specifically, patients with bone marrow edema typically have 97% higher intraosseous pressure within the lesion than patients who do not. The second key to this procedure is the biologic injections. 
The injection has been worked out extensively. Currently, we are using five cc's of AlloSync Pure Demineralized Bone Matrix mixed with four, uh, three cc's of bone marrow concentrate. Typically, this is obtained by taking 60 cc's of bone marrow from the iliac crest and concentrating it down. I like to mix one cc of radiopaque dye in my concentration, so I'll do a five to two to one, just so I can see where the injection is going, and I'm gonna show you why I do that in a little bit. However, if you do not want to use dye, I would recommend using three cc's of bone marrow concentrate. The indications for this procedure are early stage bone marrow edema lesions where repair is still possible. These are typically gonna be your younger patients where you should feel uncomfortable with these patients going on to knee replacements in the next several years. The great thing about this is you have a revision option. This is a treatment of a lesion. So let's say we do this and a patient gets three years of pain relief. I have zero qualms about going back and doing this again. Whereas if it was a calcium phosphate injection, I would have significant concerns about doing that again. If, that doesn't, if you're not comfortable with that, you can then at that point go on to your other treatment options as well. The kit for intraosseous bioplasty gives you two options on how to treat this. There's a direct approach where you will use the cannulated drill to drill directly into the lesion. And there's a reamer option where you can use a guide pin to get into the lesion and then ream out. It does come with a 14cc mixing syringe that you can use for injections. I would recommend that when you are injecting this, you add on the 1cc syringe from the adipose tissue harvest kit as it will give you much more control during your injections. How do we treat individual lesions? Um, bone marrow edema, stress fractures, typically you start with a period of rest and not weight bearing. In prolonged cases, the drill allows you the ability to core out the pathologic bone and in a biologic injection to speed the healing response. In most cases of avascular necrosis or sonk, you can typically weight these out as they will be self-limiting. However, if the lesion is prolonged and progressive, the indirect approach allows you a way of actually drilling out the whole lesion. You can use a guide pin directly into your lesion, use the reamer to create, remove the necrotic bone and create a bleeding bed. The cannulated drill will then fit over the guide pin and you can do your biologic injections. For arthritic lesions, we all know conservative measures, rest, unloader bracing, the direct approach is actually ideal for this. With the direct approach, you use orthogonal plane imaging in the OR and correlate that with your MRI finding of bone marrow edema. Drill directly into the lesion, remove the cannulation, and inject your biologic. Again, in this case, we're showing you the 14cc syringe. I would recommend that you transfer this out to your 1cc syringes for better pressure control as you're injecting. Our initial results for this, we did do a prospective trial of about 20 patients, all under the age of 30, uh, 55, with bone marrow edema lesions either related to osteoarthritis or avascular necrosis. Our average follow-up is about a year and a half at this point, with significant improvements in both visual analog scales, IKDC, and KOS. I'm gonna show you two case presentations. Uh, the first, this is actually the first patient I did. She is about two and a half years out now. This is a patient that had a previous um, partial meniscectomy and had significant medial base pain on her tibial plateau. Intraoperatively, again, we had the MRI up and then uh, correlated that with orthogonal plane imaging, drilled into the area, and this is why I like to use the radiopaque dye. This showed me exactly where the injection went to make sure that we hit the right spot. Here's another presentation of a, a second patient. This is a 36-year-old male with significant lateral joint line pain. I'm gonna show you his MRI at six months. So again, you can see this is a six-month MRI. The lesion has now resolved, and even the drill hole has actually healed. Again, put that in uh, contrast with a calcium phosphate injection two years out where you can still see the drill hole. Postoperatively, it's important to remember that this injection, unlike calcium phosphate, has no real structural integrity to it. It's intended to allow the lesion to heal, so therefore you do have to keep these patients not weight bearing for a period of three to four weeks. So in conclusion, the treatments to date for bone marrow edema have intended on stabilizing the lesion, not necessarily healing the lesion. The disadvantage here is that it cannot be used in avascular necrosis. The only revision option that you have is knee replacement. And which makes their use questionable in younger patients. Intraosseous bioplasty provides us with a biologic solution to this problem. It's diverse in that it can be used in not only arthritis, but also avascular necrosis and stress fracture. It's potentially curative in that it allows uh, the lesion to heal, and it has the ability to be repeated, which means you can have a longer delay to replacement. Thank you.